This is a tutorial about dehydration. Uh, it's aimed at level three students uh, who are learning anatomy and physiology and are perhaps facing an exam, may get a question about dehydration or diabetes insipidus. So this is a tutorial which will explain those both as topic areas. We will start then with what is dehydration? So when dehydration uh, becomes a bit of an issue, it is when a person has a loss of 10% of their total body water. The average human being has, uh, or rather the average male, has a, a water content of around 60%, um, which should be at a constant 60%. However, the percentages are different. So newborn, 80% fluid water content, toddler, child, okay. Woman, actually there, I think, because we are generally slightly smaller, uh, it says 55% of these, of course, are averages depending on the size of the person. Um, the reason why we need to, I'll go through a few of the important reasons why we need to remain hydrated. Okay, our skin is 80% uh, water. Our blood is 85% water. That's one a bit more obvious. Our brain, our brain is 75% water. In order to function properly, it needs to have that fluid. The lungs, the lungs, 90%. Uh, that is a huge amount of water needed for the lungs. And then you've got 75% um, for the muscle. So different organs, different parts of the body systems have varying, uh, water, varying amounts of water percentages. Um, but this just, just these images will give you um, a reason, an understanding of why we must stay hydrated. Go back to the brain. The brain is surrounded by a fluid called cerebral fluid. It actually goes down the spine as well. So it's spinal cerebral fluid and it hydrates the brain. It keeps this uh, hydrated. It offers a certain amount of cushioning as well. So if the head is hit, the um, fluid there has a certain amount of cushioning so it doesn't damage the brain, uh, even if you have a good blow to the head. Um, you have probably experienced headaches that are caused by a small amount of dehydration, particularly if you're a child running around or you're part of a sports team. But that that loss would be sort of two to five percent of your body fluid to give you that headache. Um, so only minor. Uh, and you would be able to then hydrate fairly quickly if you drank water. Um, Sometimes if you have an illness as a child as well, or even as an adult, again, you get that headache. Uh, if you drink a lot of alcohol the following day, alcohol can, contains a diuretic, which um, means that the body doesn't have enough fluid. And that could, that's often described as that hangover. So the brain functions much better if it's well hydrated. Uh, before an exam, make sure that you drink water um, take water into the exam because this brain will function better if you keep it hydrated. Other, other, um, other reasons then for keeping the right level of water. Um, if you think about a body cell, uh, every cell in our body um, has organelles floating in it and they're floating in cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is mostly water. So every single cell in our body requires water. Uh, it lubricates our joints. So we have fluid in some of our joints and that helps with cushioning again. If you think about your knee, uh, it has uh, water in your saliva. You need to moisten the food and it needs to liquefy in your digestive system. Uh, and in saliva, it is introducing a digestive uh, enzyme, all of which is necessary. It allows for sweating, so may cool our temperature with the evaporation off our skin. There is a huge long list of water processing in our body uh, to make sure that it is healthy. 
The water content in our body, then, we need it to remain um, at that 60%. And there is a very clever mechanism, a homeostasis mechanism called osmoregulation. Osmoregulation is um, that balance of fluids, so it keeps at a consistent 60%. It's a very clever mechanism. There is a separate video about uh, osmoregulation, uh, um, so you can watch that if you need that, uh, that information as well. The balancing of water then takes place in the kidneys. The brain sends messages depending on the amount of fluid detected in the body and these messages are a hormone and it sends a message to the kidneys to either retain more fluid in the body or urinate more fluid out. Um, it will um, uh, retaining it, it will reabsorb it into the body. It's very clever, very clever. Now the NHS website says that we should be drinking between six and eight glasses of fluid a day. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be water. It could be a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, can of coke, or those alcoholic drinks, but don't have too many. Now, the recommended amount for children is slightly different. We've already looked at the fact that a child, uh, a toddler or uh, a baby has a higher percentage. So the recommendation is that um, a two to three year old um, perhaps drink four cups of uh, some sort of fluid, uh, four to nine, five cups. And then, um, nine year old it's seven cups they are running around they are sweating more uh, and it's not just about cups of water it could be um uh, fluid in fruit and vegetables so it's pretty obvious that a um cucumber and a melon has a quite a high water content but less so uh, you probably don't think of the spinach leaf, but that is also containing a fluid content as well. Right, fluid that is lost excessively then. If a person um, has uh, an illness that could be a symptom, could be diarrhea and vomiting, it could be that the person perhaps has eaten food, it's food poisoning, that means there are um, these as a result of this, uh, often goes hand in hand with a temperature. Uh, this is a temperature chart for children. But it explains that there is a high water loss that needs to be replaced. And if a person is vomiting, replacing that water is difficult because the intake often ends up as more vomiting. Um, this is an average uh, daily intake of drinks and foods and then you have the average output but if a person is vomiting, um, is producing more liquid faeces um, then they are going to be having um, a higher output than that and that is where there is an issue with dehydration. Being denied the opportunity to have a drink um, is neglect and it does happen so there's no fluid intake um, vomiting and diarrhea or fever means a loss of fluids uh, that are then being struggled to perhaps be replaced this is what then ends up as an issue I'll move these and put this one here as well so apart from a headache a person will become uh, confused so sometimes it is assumed that the older person that is a little bit muddled um, is, uh, is, has dementia, but it could be that they have uh, a, an, an element of dehydration going on behind that confusion. A person will feel weak. And then the colour of the urine, there will be less urine if the person is dehydrated and it will be down here. So you've got three to four mildly uh, dehydrated, Five to six, um, it says drink two glasses of wine, wine, fraudulent slip, two glasses of water and then severely dehydrated these darker colours down there. It can actually get darker than that. So 
the other area when we were looking at diarrhea this i bought these two out actually because we also teach about uh, communication communication and these are two written communication that allows a child or a person with a learning disability or somebody that's quite poorly to point at where they're at and then it, the person will then get a more accurate diagnosis and the right treatment so this is written communication back to this if a person here it's, it's a little bit blurred here it says this is for a child uh, gravy watery no solid pieces extremely liquid so that's your proper diarrhea and that's where you are really losing quite a lot of fluid move those to one side a minute now children get dehydrated quicker than an adult and the reason behind that is their skin loses water faster uh, it actually also gets sunburned quicker which is another fluid loss uh, and an adult skin has got different layers different thicknesses in these layers and then has a slower water loss so it's important if you're working with children in health and social care that they remain hydrated and bear that in mind um, there is a, a higher percentage of skin surface as well so they are at, at a greater risk of dehydration now on the other end you have older people often people who are older if they have dementia or, or they're already confused because they're dehydrated they may simply forget to drink um, especially in cases of dementia uh, they may also have painful joints uh, wrists and hands fingers so making a drink making a cup of tea is a lot more difficult and painful so they may not actually do that it may just be that they just think i cannot take that pain today so in health and social care then it is important that we offer drinks we're making drinks we are reminding people to drink um, so it's the carer's responsibility to do that so sometimes an older person perhaps does not want to ask for a drink they may be embarrassed that they are reliant on other people or that they are unable now unable they've always been able to make themselves a drink but now they're a bit older and they have pain pain in the hands and wrist might mean that they are embarrassed about that or they just sort of fear asking because they don't want to bother you so it's important that you are offering drinks at opportunities so that that person then has the right amount of uh, fluid intake moving on from there then what is diabetes insipidus okay just because it's to do with uh, the water balance mechanism i thought i'd include that in this so it's a health condition and it's nothing to do with the other diabetes which is to do with insulin so it's not to do with type 1 and type 2 diabetes in fact this title is a little bit misleading so what it actually is it's where the body does not produce or release enough of the antidiuretic hormone the antidiuretic hormone works directly with the kidneys uh, that, and it's telling them to either retain more fluid reabsorb back into the body or urinate more fluid out and, and this mechanism goes wrong it's a malfunction of the homeostasis mechanism the osmoregulation and the messages which tell the body the kidneys specifically to retain that fluid doesn't work so the body loses too much fluid the symptoms of this is extreme thirst and excessive urine put a toilet there because uh, a person with this condition can actually urinate out 20 liters a day so if you put that into perspective, it's a large bottle of Coke, the two litre bottles of Coke, 10 of those, which is an amazing high amount. So that's the, um, the issue with the water balance and it is a symptom of the diabetes insipidus, nothing to do with the insulin, which is a hormone. It is to do with the antidiuretic, the ADH hormone. So um, treatment for this then, is sort of the uh, chemical antidiuretic hormones taken as tablets. Now, these also may be taken, um, sometimes an older person 
has a buildup of fluid in their feet and their ankles, so they become puffy. Um, that's called edema, so if fluid is retained, sometimes it's wrists and um, hands as well, because it's a combination of gravity, if the uh, older person perhaps isn't moving around as much uh, in their 80s, uh, a combination of deterioration of these little uh, filtration units, the nephrons in the kidneys. They don't uh, sort out the fluid balance. So there's too much fluid in the body and it accumulates down at the feet and ankles or even in the wrists. Um, and again, the treatment then is the antidiuretic hormone. So that is my um, tutorial that covers dehydration and diabetes insipidus, uh, answering those questions that if you come across them in a, an exam, you should now have a better idea of what you're doing to answer them. Uh, there is that second uh, video about osmoregulation. There are many more anatomy and physiology videos. Uh, so have a wander through those resources for this. Uh, you can also find them um, on a Tez shop. It's called HSC Resources, one word. And now, although it's a shop, there is an awful lot of free resources for teachers and for students. So there's a huge resource package about the homeostasis mechanisms um, for you to then revise. Good luck with your revision. If you haven't understood, I suggest you watch the video again. Um, and sometimes that means it sinks in better. So good luck with your revision, good luck with your exam, and thank you for listening.